Number, oh, I'm sorry, where are we at? Number 19? 19 is 26, and 20 is x to the fifth power. 20 is x to the fifth power. Samuel. What was 13? 13 was DA and 14 was 7. Brady? What was 8? 8 was 108 with 6 zeros or 108 million. Charles? Can you do number 4? Questions over answers first, then we'll do the other three. Ronnie? Uh, what was 5? Five was A A A B A C B A B D B C C A C B C C. It's kind of a pattern there. All the numbers mixed with each other. Rib? Five nines. Kevin? Sixteen. Sixteen was three. Leo? Eighteen was thirty-seven. Now, Charles, what was your question? Um Number four. And somebody asked about this and they said, okay, because this is the way gas stations actually do this. You know, gas is, rather than put it, I mean, on the sign it will say 220, well, on the sign it says 224 and then they have a little fraction 9 tenths. So you actually pay 9 tenths of a cent for that extra thing. You must multiply, let me see how big this is. You must take 2.249, multiply it by 9.1, and then when you get your answer, you've got to round that to the nearest cent. That's how the gas station will do it. So you multiply it through by the 1, you get 9422, put your 0 down, 9 times 9 is 81. Uh, 36 plus 8 is 44. 18 plus 4 is 22. 18 plus 2 is 20. This is what you get numerically. There are three decimal places, one decimal places for four, one, two, three, four. You get $20.4659. And this is where you have to round to the nearest cent because we don't have, so this is how many dimes, this is how many pennies. We don't have a money currency for a thousandth of a dollar. So you have to look at this and go, okay, right? It's either going to be $20.46, or it's going to be $20.47. And what tells you that is the digit after the, the six, or the digit in the thousands. But since that is a five, they're going to round up to seven. And this would be your answer. It's going to cost you $20.47. So the notes that I'm sure you're taking for the miles test would be on this one. You need to multiply that all out. I think things are crisper and cleaner with this thing. That's because I believe it's running through an HDMI cable and not a VGA. You know what that means, Brady? Uh, upgrade it to not only really a ginormous screen. If this always uh, you could just do that on a computer screen that day. That's very good. Ellie Norquist? Mm -hmm. Love to do number six. I'm assuming that's over here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Not so sure. Not. Oh. Did you get number five right? We have to do number five first before you do number six. The sample space, if you spin the spinner twice, would look like this. You can spin an A first and then another A. If you spin A's first, you can get AA and AB and an AC. Those are all the combinations when you spin an A first. And then you got to do all the combinations when you spin a B first. You can spin a BA, you can get a BB, you can get a BC. And you do all the combinations if you spin a C first. C A, C B, C C. Those are your nine combinations if you spin the spinner. You have to get that right. You won't get the next one because the next one is based on that. Based on that, what is the probability? Probability that you'll spin an A at least once. So you look at all those that have at least one A in them. Which ones have at least one A in them. You got this one, that has an A, that has an A, that has an A, this has an A. How many are have at least A? One, two, three, four, five. Five out of the nine spins will be <coughs> at least one A. At 
least one A. If would it, how would it change? If it said you'd get exactly one A, you'd have to take out the double A. Have from? I certainly will. Notes to self on problem number 17. Right. First things first, in order of operations, what do I have to do first? Ephraim? Nope. Adding and subtracting are on the exact same level. And when you have the choice and they're on the same level, you have to work from left to right. So you have to do this first. Seven eighths. Did you do that, Ephraim? No, I didn't. Nope. So you have to do it left to right if it's on the same level. This times four, that times four, this times one, that times one. Seven eighths minus four eighths is three eighths. And then you have to add one two thirds for that. Common denominator of eight and three would be twenty-four. Times eight times eight, sixteen twenty-fours, times three times three, nine twenty-fours. Oh wait. Yeah. Add those together. You got twenty-five. Which is one and one. Stuff that I would jot down for myself. Unfair notes, Brendan Massey. Uh, can you use number 19? There's an outside chance. There's been times when I've done it before. <coughs> oh, you know what? I've got to print out some test notes. Number 19? Sure. So, Brennan, on this, what order of operations, what's the first thing you do? You do the graph. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 4 minus 2. So I end up with 5 squared minus 3 times 4 minus 2, which is 2, plus the square root of 49. Next. Yep. So 5 squared is 25 minus 3 times 2 plus 7, right? Mm -hmm. Then the next thing would be? Um, Mul multiplication. So now I'm at 25 minus 6 plus 7. And here again, people, did I do something wrong, right? Uh, here again is where people start getting goofed up because of, oh, 6 plus 7 is 13 plus 25. You can't do that. You have to go 25 minus 6 first, which is 19, and then 19 plus 7 is 26. This is where most people, if they make a mistake in this, they go, oh, well, I know what that is adding together, so I'll just, you can't do that. Order of operations say from left to right. Mm -hmm. Sam, you on board with that? Well, that's it. Everybody else. At the most everybody got wrong was three problems. I like that. Oh, Charles. Uh, number nine. Number nine? Mm -hmm. So Charlie, you don't know what perimeter is, or you can't add fractions, because all this is asking you is for the distance around that number nine. Right? I added correctly, but I got it wrong. So. I find it hard to believe that you could have added correctly and got it wrong. Uh, not if you wrote the right numbers down. So you put two and one four plus two and one four. Did you do it? Did you do all four at once, or did you do? Two parts, one part by one part, and then the other part. Did you do them all together? Did you do two and two and one fourth plus two and one fourth? What'd you get? Four and four and eight. That's what you oh. got on your paper. I find it hard to believe you're telling me your answer without looking at paper. Yeah, four and eight. Well, that's not, that would not be right because one fourth plus one fourth is two fourths. How do you get one fourth plus one fourth is one eighth? Are you with me? Fractions keep the same bottom and the tops. The other one you get one and a half plus one and a half, which is three. Hopefully you know that. So you add the three plus the four, you get seven, and the fraction two fourths reduces to one half. Seven and one half. That is brighter. I do believe. Don't you think that's brighter? Really? Do you like it better or worse? Better. Don't say that. 
Kendall Wills. Number 12. Well, again, this would be based upon you prime factorizing correctly. So how did how did you prime factorize 288? Did you do the tree thing or did you do the division? All right, so let's do that. 288. And here's where you have to be careful. So cut in half should be 144, right? And then 144 you broke down to? 12 times 12. Excellent. And 12 both break down to? 3 times 4. 3 times 4. The 3s stay because they're prime, but 4s break down to? 2 and 2. And 2 and 2, right? So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 2s and 2 3s. Is that what you got? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. 360, same deal then. You cut that in half and got 180. And then what? Did you get 90? You cut that in half too, did you say? You got 45. And 45 is? 5 times 9. You can keep the 5, but the 9 gets broken down to 3 times 3. So you ended up with 1, 2, 3 twos, 2 threes, and a 5. 1, 2, 3 twos, 2 threes, and a 5. Then once you get to this point, you cross cancel one for one. Two set of twos, set of twos, set of threes, set of threes, and you're left with two times two on top. It's left over. And a five on the bottom. Like this. Sure, where'd you make your mistake? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it just about being kind of careful. There. Leah? Okay. Okay, do it. Uh, and again, remember order of operations come into play with problem number 18. You need to, a fraction bar is more or less separates it into parentheses, grouping symbols. You need to get the top down to one number and the bottom down to one number and then you divide it out. So the first thing you should have taken was 4.6 minus 1.27. So this is 5, 10, 3, 3. Did you get that on top, Leah? Yeah. Okay, so 3.33 on top, all over. Now here's where people make mistakes on this. I see this all the time. 0. 0.3 times 0. 0.3 definitely has a 9 there, but where's the decimal? This has one decimal place, this has one decimal place, that's two. So you have to come back two places. There should be a point zero nine. Did you get that? And again, that's where note to self for tomorrow. Point zero nine divided into three point three three is the decimal two places. The decimal goes right here. By the way, does nine go into three hundred thirty-three? You should be able to look right away and say, why does it? Because of sum of the digits. 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9, so 9 goes into this number. A 9 goes into 33, what? 3 is 27. And then 63 is 37 for your answer. 18 would be 37. I like pretty bright colors. This makes me happy. It's a little more high def, don't you think? Look at all those numbers on there. Doesn't that make you proud to be an American? It's not that in Russia they're not doing this. They're probably training you all how to change the outcome of the presidential election. I don't know how they do that because unless somebody's standing at the booth telling me who to vote for and saying if I don't vote, how do you, how does, how do you affect, as an outside country, how do you affect the outcome of an election? I mean, I don't, without telling people that if they vote some way, you're going to hurt them or harm them. 
I mean, you could, I suppose you could give, you know, bad reviews about somebody, but still. Brainwash them. Well, yeah, but how do you use a foreign country brainwash somebody from a different country? I mean, how, what, what have you, what do you, what have you heard from the Russian people? Anything, Aiden? I mean, I couldn't tell you what one Russian person believes over another. There's got to be more questions out there. You're really stopping at that, ladies and gentlemen? Wow. Okay, but let's take a look and see what, uh, how many it was. Okay, so we answered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Kids are smarter than I think I give you credit for. Love it. Seven was it, ladies and gentlemen. Seven prompts out of 20.